With this week starting off the celebration of Martin Luther King Day, the Iowa Hall of Pride is going to bring you a story today that connects a reporter from the Cedar Rapids Gazette, George Raveling, and the I Have a Dream speech. Here in the heartland, this is the working man. These are the fields of dreams of America. No, you can't take that away. I want to stay here in the heartland. I'm here in the heartland. Hall of Fame basketball coach George Raveling had a brush with history that was rediscovered with the help of sports editor from the Cedar Rapids Gazette, Bob Denny. After his playing days at Villanova, George Raveling would become an assistant at his alma mater. He soon became the head coach at the University of Maryland and then at Washington State before being hired as the first African American head boys basketball coach at the University of Iowa in 1983. Bob Denny was a sports editor at the Cedar Rapids Gazette and he went down to Iowa City to interview Coach Raveling. And towards the end of the interview, Bob Denny asked Coach Raveling, were you ever involved in the Civil Rights Movement? George Raveling looked at Bob Denny and said, well, sort of. George Raveling and a college friend of his had gone back to his buddy's home. And while sitting at the supper table that night, his friend's dad encouraged him that they should go down to Washington, D.C. to see the March on Washington. Taking the father's advice, they left the next day and they traveled down to D.C. And walking around, they were approached by a gentleman who asked if they'd be interested in volunteering to work the event. George and his friend accepted the invitation. As the 84 degree heat in August in D.C. started to take a toll on everyone in the crowd, the final speaker of the day approached the podium, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., and gave what would become one of the greatest speeches in history, known as the I Have a Dream speech. Upon conclusion of the speech, as Dr. King is folding the speech, George Raveling happened to be standing next to the podium. And he simply turned to Dr. King and said, Dr. King, may I have a copy of that speech? And Dr. King handed him the speech. Well, as a brush with history, Raveling wouldn't fully understand the importance of that document that he held within his hand. After sharing this story with Bob Denny, Bob Denny looked at Coach Raveling and said, well, do you still have the speech? And George thought for a moment and said, yeah. And he had put it in the cover of an autobiography of Harry Truman. And he turned to the bookshelf in his office, pulled down the book, and lo and behold, there's the speech. Coach Raveling would be at the University of Iowa from 1983 to 1986, taking the Iowa Hawkeyes to back-to-back 20-win -back seasons before taking the head job at the University of Southern California. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s leadership inspired George Raveling to attend the March on Washington, and Coach Raveling would carry his message into his profession. As a coach, he was both an educator and an innovator, but more importantly, Coach Raveling was a role model to countless young African Americans, a visual of what could be accomplished. And as a reminder to all of our Iowa visitors, thanks to our partner Musco Lighting, all Iowa students receive free admission to the Iowa Hall of Pride. I really had the chance to grow up in, in small town Iowa and when I was in fifth grade my dad took a position in Carroll and uh, became a coach and a, and a teacher at the Carroll School District so I got a chance to move to Carroll and you know just go from one community to the next and it's just one of those things being able to grow up in western Iowa I've really embraced it and it's a place where I want to always end up uh, you know later down the road so you just really appreciate uh, that hometown atmosphere you get when you when you enter Iowa and you know I love the people and you know I can't say enough about the support they give uh, you know just to the state in general that's why uh, you know Iowa sports are, are better than any other place The Iowa Hall of Pride was saddened to hear about the passing of Terry Egan. Terry graduated from Exira High School, excelling in athletics, academics, and music. He then went on to Buena Vista where he'd participate in both football and baseball before beginning a teaching and coaching career. For 20 years, Terry was a classroom teacher and coach, starting the program at South Hamilton, taking Harlan to its first state championship in 1972, leading Marshalltown Bobcats to Big 8 Championship in 1977 and 1980 before hanging up the whistle and pursuing an administrative career in education, primarily at Oskaloosa and Manly North Central. Additionally, Terry would serve the Iowa High School Athletic Association as a member of the Board of Control for 10 years. Terry would retire to Mason City, and I had the opportunity to coach with Terry Egan when he was hired as the head freshman football coach in Mason City in the year 2000. Terry was an inspirational man and an educator to all. His legacy and service to students all across the state of Iowa will be remembered forever.
The COVID-19 pandemic has made it difficult for schools to visit the Iowa Hall of Pride, but you can tune in next week to see how the Iowa Hall of Pride can visit your school.